So Roblox just made it possible for anyone to create and test VR games. And like previously they added a gamepad controller and now they added a similar tool but for the virtual reality controllers and headset, which I'm going to of course overview. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's jump into Roblox Studio right now. So now to first enable the feature, we need to go into file and beta features and then scroll down to the VR emulator on the bottom. Now we just need to enable this option, press on save then press on restart studio. And now we are back. And now what we need to do is go under the test tab and here we're going to have the device and the controller. If I just enable the controller, right here we have a gamepad emulator. But for some reason I don't have the VR controller so... well... I'm just going to go to the device and then under the VR tab just select for example MetaQuest 3. And now the controllers are right here. So normally if I just do a playtest, PC I'm just going to have the controllers right here on my screen. And I can of course move my character with the thumbstick and now if I for example wanted to move one of the controllers or even the headset, I would have to use a keyboard shortcut of Alt N1. And the controls are going to be displayed in the tooltip, which I'm going to show in a minute. But for a quick presentation, if I just press the Alt N1, I'm going to be able to move my headset. And the same is going to happen if I for example go to the Move and Rotate on either the left or the right controller. So now if I press Alt N1, I'm going to be able to move this hand right here. And you of course have your normal controls on the pad emulator like walking or maybe even jumping. And you can also see that they have different keybinds like of course the WSAD which is for movement, the U which is going to open the menu where now I will need to use my controller to move it and for example just close it. But now for the tooltip it's going to be as simple as just hovering over the question mark right here. And this is going to show you different stuff like the moving, flying up and down, rotating, even tilting, the cursor lock and switching controllers. So if I easily wanted to switch between two of these, I would simply need to hold shift and then press the left arrow. Or even the right one. And if I go to the cursor lock with Alt and 1 and now just press the shift and the arrow, I can easily just switch between these two controllers and even the headset. So don't worry, you don't have to constantly just go to the camera lock, then select the left controller, go back to the camera lock, move something around here, same with the right controller. You can easily just navigate with the shift and left or right. And for the other controls, we also have flying and the tilting, where the flying is going to be shift and E, or even shift and Q. Or you can even move the headset around. And for the tilting, which is pretty fun, I can actually just do this. And this is while holding my route mouse button. And I just realized that this is even working with a free cam, which is pretty funny. For some reason I started falling. When I press E I should be falling down and when I press Q I should be falling up, but both of these buttons are just moving me lower. Um, so yeah, anyways. Okay, how do I live now? Oh, like this, okay. But yeah, that was the presentation of the keypad emulator. And let's just go to the keyboard mapping now. And this is going to be pretty much the same as in the gamepad emulator. But you can change the key binding on any of these buttons. Here you have your triggers, bumpers, action keys, thumbstick and the start button. And if I for example just go to the start and for example instead of view I wanted this to be enter or rather return, I can just change it like this. And I can simply just save it and now this is going to be working on return. And it's going to update the display automatically as you can see right here. Now I think I didn't mention is that for the triggers, I think you can even assign the pressing strength. But yeah, now the quest 2 is going to be basically the same but the thing you need to remember is that if you have a mapping for quest 3 and you can see that I have start on return, it's not going to save the settings for quest 2. This is going to be you again, and if you wanted to change it, you again will need to go to the edit mapping and just assign the key manually right here. And again, this is going to be the same suggestion that I had with the gamepad emulator, which is an ability to transfer the keybinds to another emulator. But anyways, right now I just need to press on save and it's going to work properly. And now if you wanted to for example go into the first person, you will just press on the right thumbstick. And now your character is going to be in first person and if you wanted to just rotate him around you would just switch the camera lock and basically just walk like never mind it doesn't seem to be working. Apparently your character walking isn't relative to the to the VR headset which is kind of weird and yeah apparently even tilting the camera isn't going to work either. But yeah maybe this is a thing with the VR or the controls on the emulator but I haven't really used VR so I don't really know and you guys can probably just leave a comment explaining why it's behaving like this. Okay, funny thing that I just realized, you can see things move on the pad models. 
whenever you use the emulator. If I just move them in front of my camera and then press on some of them, if I move the joystick, you can see that it's actually working properly. So this is for the bumper, right? And here you can even press the trigger scene. And yeah, like I said, this is going to adjust the strength that you are pressing the trigger with. But yeah, I'm actually just going to stop the emulator now. And now for the bit more boring part, I'm going to go over the dev forum post. Where here they are saying that they are excited to announce the update following the release of Gamepad Emulator beta feature. And now the control emulators are supporting VR now, making it easier and more accessible. And they mentioned something that was really basically frustrating while making a VR game, where you would have to constantly just put the VR headset on and off just to do a playtest. And you can now handle it directly in studio completely gear free. And since like I said this is still a beta feature, you should still test it with a real headset to ensure full compatibility. Then enabling the beta feature which I've shown already, and the features of the VR controller plugin which is very similar to the gamepad emulator that I also made a video on. And the VR controllers you have are going to be for Quest 2 and Quest 3. And once you select them you can of course interact with them, but now there is the mouse and keyboard emulation. And here you can control the 6 degrees of freedom for both the headset and controllers using a combination of mouse movements and the keyboard shortcuts. And for the detail breakdown of the movement and rotation controls, simply hover over the tooltip. And to toggle the mouse emulation, you can use Alt plus 1. Then a controller selection, where you can use the toolbar to switch between the left and right controller and the headset to control its rotation and position. And to quickly switch between the controllers, use the keyboard shortcut shift plus left or right. And now under the keyboard shortcuts, you have a custom mapping, which is similar to the gamepad emulator. And now under the best practices, you need to keep in mind that Quest 2 and Quest 3 virtual controllers won't be displayed in the plugin when you are emulating with a non-VR device. And the default mappings are provided for the 6 degrees of freedom, meaning rotation and movement, for both the controller and the headset. And you can hover over the tooltip icon, which is going to be a question mark, for more details. Then just enabling the emulator, which again I've shown already, and looking to the future, where they are saying that they are actively working to expanding the skipper mapping customization options, which will enable custom mappings for 6 degrees of freedom, and introduce shortcuts with modifier keys or even greater flexibility. And they are looking forward on seeing what kind of VR games you will make with the help of VR emulator. And you can share any feedback under this the forum post. And lastly here are the special thanks. And of course happy developing. And that's for the quick overview of the the forum post. But yeah, that's going to be everything for today. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks everyone for watching and also a quick news. I sometimes try to stream on the weekend so you can enable the bell notifications so you don't miss out on them. But yeah. Last you can check out my Patreon page. But anyways, so again thanks for watching, hope everyone has a nice day and see ya guys.